to Lauren Foster's where we talk about all things foster care and adoption related and today we're going to talk about the licensing process and what it looks like to become a licensed foster parent. Now I have to start off with a disclaimer that in every single state it is different and not only in every single state is it different but it might differ per county and it also might differ per agency. If you're new here my name is Lauren and I'm former foster youth. I'm also an adoptive mom with 10 kiddos, 4 biological kids and 6 of my kids have been adopted out of the foster care system. We're also a military family so we have fostered in 3 different states. So as always all of my videos are from the perspective of both being in the system myself and also having kids that have come out of the system. And also I like to sprinkle in some military stuff here and there for those of you that are watching that may also be military families and have some questions about this. I do have other licensing videos out there um, and what that process looks like, what it looks like um, to walk through a home study and that kind of thing. So definitely check those out. But I thought I would just talk a little bit today about just the licensing process in general because that's a question I hear a lot is just, you know, how long does it take to get licensed? What does that process look like? So I thought I'd throw that all together in one video with the caveat that it's going to be different everywhere you go. So um, I have not dealt with two agencies that are exactly the same. I have not had two experiences that are exactly the same. Um, I would say all my foster and adoptive friends from around the world, because once again, we're military, so you meet people all over the world and we all end up dispersing to new places. Um, I don't think any of us have had the same experience as each other even. Um, so everywhere you go is gonna be different. So if I miss something in this video, feel free to comment below and let us know because there may be somebody else watching this video from the area that you're from and maybe the rules might be different and you can add a little piece of your own. So I definitely wanna start off by saying that some states allow you to get licensed directly through CPS or um, you know the Department of Family Services or whatever your area calls that division or you can choose a private agency. I think that's a whole video on its own about whether one benefits might outweigh the benefits of another. Um, but I will say for a new foster parent, I usually recommend that people go through a private agency if given the choice, um, because I do think sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes there is a little bit su more support to be had there. So what exactly does the licensing process look like? I'm gonna give you kind of a general idea because it could be different agency per agency as far as what order things may go in but in general the first things first is you're gonna call around and start looking for agencies once again we're talking about kind of private agencies in this particular scenario um, so a lot of times I hear where do I start where where's the like baseline of where do I start and it usually boils down to just finding the agency you want to work with I do have a video about that and I will link it above um, but just kind of the general gist of it is that um, you you want to call around and you want to talk to agencies and kind of feel them out you, like ask the questions you have that you're maybe too afraid to ask even you know I, I see a lot of on like a uh, foster care um, Facebook groups or, or other forums you know uh, well what you know is my house too small um, how many kids could I foster in this area does it matter how many kids I already have you know what does this look like for me in my circumstance in my scenario in my area and really that's something only they can answer for you um, so calling around and kind of feeling out how they're answering those questions because some agencies may say, hey, like maybe we're not a good fit for you, um, which is fine. That's great. I, I would hope agencies would be upfront with that kind of a thought that if they're not a good fit for you, then like let's get that out of the way to begin with. And you may also notice that some agencies are just more helpful in general. They're more willing to answer questions. They're more willing to take the time to explain things. Maybe that is how you choose your agency. You may want to check and see if the agency has good reviews, which is, may or may not be something you can really see online. Unfortunately, I don't know you can always trust online reviews with that kind of thing a great way to find the agency you want to work with um, could be joining local foster care support groups or asking around and seeing if anyone else has worked with agencies seeing if that agency's values align with your values those are important things to know and also even knowing the why of what's behind you wanting to become a foster parent I think those are important when you're seeking out an agency um, ultimately the primary goal of foster care uh, disclaimer and not just disclaimer but like uh, FYI uh, make sure you understand understand this if you're getting into foster care the primary goal of foster care is always reunification once again I have another video on that um, but but what are what are your goals here I mean like if, if you're getting into foster care because your ultimate 
goal is to hopefully adopt, that's important for you to be outright open with your agency about that and see if that is something they're willing to work with. And last but not least about agencies, and then I really will move on about picking an agency because this video is not about that. It's about the licensing process itself. Um, but I do want to throw this in here. Um, if you're scared to make the jump, you're scared to um, contact an agency because you're just maybe you're overthinking it or you're anxious or you're nervous about what agency to pick. The cool thing is um, for the most part, you should be able to switch anytime. So if you start working with an agency and you get halfway through license, and things just aren't really working out, uh, maybe you're just kind of not getting a good feel, you should be able to, as long as you stay in the same area, take a lot of that training with you. Um, I know that's not the same in every, every area. Um, I, I have to say a lot of my videos, I know that it is different everywhere. Everywhere is different. Every agency is different. Every town is different. Every county is different. Every state is different. Um, but for the most part, if you're staying in the same area, same state, a lot of times those things will transfer. Let's say you get all the way through the licensing process. Um, agencies should not be allowed to... Um, to penalize you for um, switching agencies post getting licensed. Once you're licensed, you're licensed. If you have a placement, they're not supposed to be allowed to remove that child from your home or those children from your home. Um, so you can switch at any time. So if that takes away some of your anxiety as far as just jumping in, um, step one, picking that agency, and then we move on. Okay. Once you've contacted your agency, there's going to be some initial paperwork. They may want to come over um, to your house and kind of have a conversation with you. They may ask you to come in and fill out some of that paperwork. We've had it happen both ways. Um, we've been emailed things. Um, so it, it just kind of depends. Once again, I know I say that like a broken record. It depends on the agency, but they're going to send you some initial paperwork and that's going to be like, you know, name, phone number, email, you know, that kind of stuff. They may get more in depth right off the bat. They may ask about some background information. Um, they may ask about, you know, square footage of your home. Um, so it just depends on your agency and what they want right up front, but there will be initial paperwork. Okay. So don't be afraid to go ahead and fill that out quickly. Um, even if you're not in a hurry, because there's going to be a lot more down the road when it comes to the licensing process. I was saying this in no particular order because I would hope the next step is background checks, um, but it isn't always. But background checks will be one of the steps in your process. And the reason I say it, it's kind of neat when it's like upfront is because sometimes background checks can take a long time. There are some states that are very backed up, especially because of COVID. Um, there's some agencies that are just really backed up on things. And there are just certain states that take a little longer than other states. So if you're like us and you're military, you've moved around a little bit and they want a certain length of time time uh, background um, and you've lived in a few different states, it may take a while to get that information from certain states. Um, so the earlier, the better on those background checks. Usually you'll get fingerprinted. Um, some agencies will pay for that fingerprinting. Some of them will have you pay out of pocket. You'll also go through something called a home study. Um, at this point, you may have already been given a pile of uh, paperwork on top of your initial paperwork. Um, you may have given a, uh, been given a lot more at this point, uh, maybe about what your background's been like, what your family history is like, medical background, um, mental health background, marriage background. Um, all those things are probably going to be in some paperwork somewhere. Um, they're going to go through um, your finances. They're going to want to know how much money do you have. Um, they're going to know want to know why you're getting into foster care, what your goals are, and those kind of things. Um, so usually before you have a home study, um, you're going to get presented with some of that paperwork because they may have some questions during the home study, um, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen in that order. Once again, in no particular order, there will be some sort of interview process. I do have another video and I'm sorry, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here, but I do have another video about home studies and what that process looks like. I will link it above, um, but they're basically, they're going to come interview you um, and your family and um, it could look several ways. Having fostered seven different, either single children or sibling sets over three different states, it has looked very different because we have closed our home and then been relicensed within the same state. We've also moved. And I will say that interview process has looked very, very different. Sometimes they interview my kids. Sometimes they haven't. Um, sometimes they go by age. Like if the child's older, maybe they interview that child, but maybe not the younger child. Um, they have done and they have talked to the younger children before. Um, they've done it in a group setting where we're all kind of sitting around a table and having a discussion. They've done it where um, they've taken the child off to the side and had a private conversation. Um, so it just really depends. I will leave this once again for the um, home study video. I won't get too in depth um, because I bet the question might be going through your mind about like, 
Um, do I need to coach my kids? Do I need to prep them? Um, you really don't. You can. I, I sort of did. Um, but anyway, watch that video if you want to hear more about that. Depending on where you live, they may have more visitors. Um, we were getting licensed um, in one particular state. The health department had to come out. The fire department had to come out and make sure that you were up to code. Um, and when the health department came out, they checked everything. I mean, they made sure cereal boxes were sealed. They made sure they had rules like no tin foil in the freezer, like you couldn't have something wrapped in tin foil. I mean, it was almost like, um, because I've, I have some background in restaurant management, they, it was almost like they had, um, them coming and doing like a, like a health department inspection in my kitchen. So it was really heavy duty. And these were different agencies that kind of came separately. So we had our home study interview who came into our home, took a look around, wanted to see the rooms, wanted to see the beds. Then we had the um, health department come out. They wanted to see everything, including the bathroom and where we stored chemicals and the way our food was stored. And then we had the, um, the fire department come out and they wanted to make sure that we were up to code, that we had um, fire extinguishers and that we had um, fire alarms set up or carbon monoxide um, alarms set up or um, maybe that our exits weren't blocked, you know, those kind of things. So it was really intense and it, was, it almost felt like three separate home studies in a way. Um, but we've also been in a state where um, the home study is done by a primary person at the agency and that person is the person responsible for checking for all those other things. Once again, it's so dependent on your area because they have state laws they need to follow. And so they're gonna have to make sure Sure that they are um, dotting every I and crossing every T. They're really not trying to make it hard on you. They just want to make sure that they have safe homes. So after your initial paperwork, background checks, maybe some fingerprints, uh, and maybe one or several interviews, whether that be several agencies that come to your home or just the initial person that comes to do the home study coming into your home to look at everything, you should also have classes. As far as the classes you have to take, generally speaking, you're probably going to take some trauma-informed parenting type of class or several maybe, um, and maybe a weekend long type of situation. How they space those classes out is really, once again, up to the agency. I'm sorry I keep saying that, but it's so true. Um, some of them really are in a hurry to get their people licensed, so they're going to have them back to back to back. Some agencies may have their stuff a little more spread out. Um, uh, we've had training that has lasted all weekend, so we as a couple had to not only be together, but commit to a whole weekend of training, which meant that my husband needed to make sure he had some leave um, to take off of work and that kind of thing. Um, and we've also been able to, depending on the agency, have um, trainings where I take one and then he's able to catch a different one on a different schedule that works better for him. Um, so that just depends on the agency. So if you are someone where maybe you and your spouse, um, your your schedules kind of conflict, um, when you're checking out those agencies, that's a good question to ask. You know, do, can I take training separate from my spouse? Um, or do I have to take all the trainings with my spouse? Uh, do you have nighttime trainings? Um, do you have weekend trainings? Um, are there trainings, uh, are your trainings lasting all weekend or are they kind of broken up a bit for those that, that work and maybe have crazy schedules? Um, so those are important questions to ask. So a little bit of a military disclaimer here. If you have a spouse that's deployed, that's one of the questions you want to ask right away when you're looking at agencies. You want to say, hey, my spouse is deployed. I would still like to start the licensing process. Is that even an option? And they will let you know. CPR and first aid is a given for foster parents. I have yet to meet a foster parent or been in a situation where we didn't have to be CPR and first aid certified. Um, they may take whatever you already have if you are already CPR and first aid certified through whatever. Um, they may go ahead and take that, but they may say, hey, we use this particular kind of CPR this, through this particular organization. We need you to get that. So don't be surprised if they have you re-up that. Also, I have been in a place where they um, wanted a specific uh, level of CPR as far as uh, my CPR needed to actually say infant, and then I had to have a separate one that said child because of what I was, the ages I was getting licensed for was, I think at the time we were like zero to seven. Um, so it needed to cover those age groups. Once again, your agency should let you know all of that. In fact, I have found that really good agencies will give you right up front, like kind of a to-do list, like a list of, hey, cross all this off. And that kind of gives you the freedom to just kind of take the initiative and get some of that stuff done on your own if you can. If your agency doesn't provide something like that, just ask them. A lot of times they have no problem just telling you what the next steps are so that you can get things going. If you're like us, when we first started our foster care journey, we were so excited. Like we didn't want to wait like another minute um, to get licensed. We were just ready to just jump in. And so we really wanted that process to go as fast as possible. But a lot of agencies will use the term paperwork pregnancy. And what they mean by that 
is um, if you want more time, like maybe you're still kind of on the fence and you're not sure how quickly you want to do this or what age groups you want to do or if you need to hear more, a lot of these agencies are willing to work with that and, um, and they're not saying, hey, we have a class coming up, you have to take it. They're saying, hey, we have one coming up this month, we have one next month, and then we have one three months from now. Pick any of those classes. In other words, um, maybe it's going to take you six months to get licensed, but if you would like to take the whole year and stretch this out, um, that's fine too. These agencies want to know that you're in it to win it. Like they want to know that you're in it for the long haul and they don't want to rush you through something that you're going to resent later. So a lot of these agencies would rather you take your time and, and have you know exactly what you're getting into than have you rush through the whole process and then burn out right away. Something that's really cool that a couple agencies I've seen um, have done um, is they'll have a panel um, that you can go to and, and it's just considered one of your classes where maybe they'll have like a birth or biological mom or dad, um, a CPS worker, a judge, an ad litem, a foster parent, a seasoned foster parent, maybe former foster youth um, sitting there and you can just kind of ask any question. So I'm going to, I'm going to recommend it. If your agency has something like that, try to go to it. If it's not mandatory, definitely try to go to it anyway and ask questions um, because, uh, and don't be shy to ask questions like the yucky questions. Um, I've gotten a, the opportunity opportunity to be a part of a couple of those panels, um, both as a foster parent and also as a, um, an advocate for um, open adoption when safe and possible, and also as a former foster youth. So I've kind of gotten to wear a few hats in those scenarios. And um, those are great ways to get to know what this process looks like from all sides. The licensing process can take anywhere from six months to a year. Um, I'm sure there's people that somehow get licensed in less than six months, and I'm sure there's people that take longer than a year. But that that's been kind of the average I've seen is about six months to a year just depending. So after everything I've just mentioned, there is a point where you get handed a license and maybe it's through email, maybe they bring your certificate, maybe they have you sign off on some final paperwork. Um, but once you're licensed, those calls can start coming in for placements. Now, I do want to say this, this is part of another video coming soon um, about getting that first call for placements or just any call for placements. Um, but uh, they, they may not come the day of. Uh, some people will say the second you're licensed, don't be surprised if you get like 50,000 calls um, that first day. Um, that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration, of course, but um, we it didn't work that way for us. We, we waited a while before we got any calls, and then when we did, they were kind of spread out, and it doesn't mean your home study's bad or anything's wrong. Um, it's, it's actually kind of an awesome thing. It means that there could not be many need for placement in your area, and that's a great thing. Anyway, that is the gist of the licensing process, and I hope that helps. Um, Please subscribe, please like. Um, I love you being part of my community. So if you come across this video, welcome. And we hope you're here to stay. Um, feel free to comment and contribute if you're a foster parent and you've got some information for us all, feel free to comment down below. Uh, maybe you're someone else in the system. Maybe you're former foster youth yourself. Maybe you're a judge, maybe you're a caseworker. Um, feel free to share your perspective. We'd love to hear it. And I will see you next time. All right, bye.